I just got back from the most magical European Christmas market trip where I started in Belgium and then flew to Central Europe to check out all things Christmas. So even if you only have time to squeeze this in for a weekend getaway, I'm gonna help you see all the best Christmas things that Central Europe has to offer. We'll start by flying into Vienna to spend day one there. During the day, I recommend you do some of the normal tourist stuff that doesn't really revolve around Christmas. I'd start in the Hofburg area so you can see the Sissy Museum, this stunning white semicircle of a building that is just jaw-dropping. You don't actually have to pay to go into the museum if you don't want to, but it's definitely worth looking at from the outside. It's also where all of the horse and carriages are, so it's a nice photo or video opportunity. Then you can walk through the tunnel of the building, which of course is also stunning, to get to the back side where you can actually see the Hofburg. the Archduke Karl Equestrian statue, and the outer castle gate. From there, you can turn left on the main road, Opernring, to go to Berg Garden, which is a beautiful park that offers a different view of the Hofburg along with the Albertina Museum. Then you can walk a little further down that main road to snap some photos of the beautiful Vienna State Opera House. There are people standing outside trying to sell you tickets to actually go to an opera, so if that's something that interests you, just know that you should be prepared to have that conversation with them. From here, you're gonna head to my favorite place in all of Vienna, the Austrian National Library. This is not free, it will cost you 10 euros to go inside, but it is absolutely worth it. It is hands down the most beautiful library I have ever seen with floor to ceiling bookshelves, columns, and Sistine Chapel-esque ceiling art. You could just stay here for hours and hours and just get lost in the beauty. By now, the Christmas markets should start to open up, so I'd hit some of the smaller ones like Free Young Platz and Amhof. Both are right in the city center and right next to one another. As the sun begins to set, I'd walk from Amhof through Tuklauben <laughs> shopping street to see the beautiful light displays above the streets. And eventually make my way to St. Stephen's Cathedral for your first night Christmas market where you can see the cathedral all lit up and walk around all the stalls. From here, you're basically going to walk in a huge circle along the outskirts of Vienna's city center to see the other main Christmas markets, starting with Karlsplatz, then on to Maria Theresian Platz, and finish at my personal favorite Rothaus Platz. If you want a more in-depth guide to Vienna's Christmas markets and what to, you know, eat and drink there, check out this video. You'll end the day by sleeping in Vienna and then wake up early the next day to hop on a one-hour train to Bratislava, Slovakia. A tip for booking trains in this region, get to the train stations early and book them at the station. I looked on both Amio and Trainline, which are apps on your phone, and it was almost double what I ended up paying at the station. When you arrive in Bratislava, it's about a 20-minute walk from the train station to the old town or the city center. If I'm being completely honest, it's very, very tiny, not a whole lot to do here, but it really is one of those places that feels like a time capsule. I truly felt like I had stepped back in time when I arrived in the old town. So as you're walking from the station, you'll pass by the presidential palace and gardens, which is under renovations right now. I'm not sure when it will be done, but I'm sure it will be a lovely place to stop and explore once it actually is finished. Otherwise, keep walking towards Michael's Gate. Right when you walk under the gate, you feel like you have been transported to a village a hundred years ago. It's so quaint, it's so charming, just take some time to stroll through the main road in downtown, shop, or even grab a bite to eat. 
but don't eat too much because next you're heading to the main Christmas market near the Old Town Hall and it is filled with amazing food options. It's super, super cute and very different from the Vienna markets. All the stalls are bright red with like a red and white printed roof design. It feels very much like Santa's Village. So it has a lot of the same food and drink options as the markets in Vienna, like punch, of course, bratwurst, goulash, and tons of other stuff. My favorite thing I ate at this market was a potato pancake topped with cheese, sour cream, bacon, and onions. Essentially, it tasted like a deep fried baked potato and I can't even imagine eating a normal baked potato again. It was just so heavenly. And one other thing I don't remember seeing at the Vienna markets were these rolled up crepe looking things that were super, super cheap and so delicious. So spend some time walking around the market and eating everything that you absolutely can. And if you're not sick of Christmas markets yet, we're going to walk about three minutes down the road to Ganyamid's Fountain. And there's another market lining the main road there so again it's worth taking a stroll down it and eating even more Once you're done, it's time to walk back up to the train station and hop on a two and a half hour train to Budapest. Again, I will reiterate, please buy the ticket at the train station to save yourself some money. You can use the apps like Amio or Trainline to let you know the train schedule and when the next train is actually going to leave. But my Trainline app was selling the train ticket from Bratislava to Budapest for over 32 pounds, which is about 37-ish euros. And when I bought it at the station, it was 16 euros. So a huge, huge difference. You'll arrive in Budapest at either Neugati or Kaliti station. Both are pretty much equal distance from downtown and well connected by public transport. I highly recommend buying a day group pass if you're with multiple people. It's about 5,000 huff, which is about 13 euros and it's valid for a full 24 hour period. All methods of transportation included tram, metro, bus, you name it. So it's definitely worth it. So get to your accommodation for the night and that ends day two. You wake up on day three and you're ready to see the sights. If I'm being completely honest, only having one day in Budapest is not enough time. There is so much to see and do here. So if you do have an extra day to spare, I highly recommend using it to add more time here in Budapest. So start off by seeing the main sites like Central Market, which is by far the best place to get your paprika souvenirs, if that's something that you're interested in. For those of you who don't know, Hungary is famous for its paprika since it's a staple of Hungary's cuisine. In the Central Market, they were selling these super cute bags of paprika with a souvenir wooden spoon for 800 huff, whereas most of the actual souvenir shops were selling the exact same thing for 2100 huff. From here you can walk up Baki U, which is the main shopping street in Budapest. Then take a small detour to Dohani Street Synagogue to snap a few photos before you go to the Ferris Wheel of Budapest, which is actually in between the two main Christmas markets, but we do want to save those for when the sun goes down. So you'll continue walking past the Ferris Wheel, don't go to the Christmas markets yet, head to the riverbank and walk along the river, which for us, it was snowing. So it was so magical that first day in Budapest, especially as we were walking along the river. Eventually, you'll get to the shoes on the Danube Bank Memorial, which is just chilling. It is a memorial of dozens of pairs of shoes along the riverbank to remember the Hungarian Jews who were shot in the winter of 1944 to 1945. The memorial depicts their shoes left behind as their dead bodies fell into the river. So spend some time to really soak in what this place means and what happened here. When you're ready, you'll continue up the river to the Parliament Building, which is arguably the most famous sight to see in Budapest and the icon of the Budapest skyline. Make sure to walk all the way around it to view it from all different angles and get some great photos. Next up, you'll cross the river to the Buddha side, since you've been on the Pesh side all day, and you'll head to the Fisherman's Bastion, which is completely free and gives you insanely good views of the city. When I was there, it was super rainy and super foggy. It was still so magical though, so I can't imagine what it would look like on a really clear day. If you have time to squeeze in Buddha Castle, now would be the time since you're already on the Buddha side, but I do think there just might not be enough time and it's probably best to head back across the river to hit the two Christmas markets now as the sun has gone down. The first one is at Voro Smarty Tur. <laughs> And the 
next one, which is more magical in my opinion, at St. Stephen's Basilica. From here, your weekend trip to see Central Europe's best Christmas markets is complete. But like I said, if you have an extra day or two to spend in Budapest, I highly recommend it. It's an amazing city with so much to offer, like the different thermal baths, Heroes Square, Badge de Hunyad Castle, Buddha Castle if you didn't get to it, the Citadella Hill, Gellert Hill Cave, and the list goes on and on. If you're obsessed with Christmas lights, decor, markets, and just all things Christmas, don't forget to take a trip to the city that was just voted 2023's most magical Christmas light displays in all of Europe, London. Check out this video for the ultimate London Christmas guide.